Hello and welcome back to part two of our minimalist portrait painting. In this video, we are going to talk about shading and adding some shadows and highlights to our image here. In our last video, we did our line work and then we sourced color from our reference image and we added flat areas of color. Now we're gonna go back to the reference and or we're gonna manipulate these colors to add in again those shadows and highlights. So to get started, we are going to go ahead and turn off all of our layers, except for our reference photo all the way at the bottom. So go ahead and turn off that eyeball on every single one. And when you have your reference open, I just want you to spend some quality time observing the shadows and the highlights that you see. Everybody's image is different, but everybody will have um, some similarities, some commonalities between them. The first thing is that everybody will have a light source. And so you're all going to have some highlights on different parts of your image and therefore you're also going to have some shadows. So the, my advice to you is to find your light source. For me, it, I was outside, so the sun was right above me. You can see the highlight on my hair right here. You can also see some highlights down here on my hair as well. In addition, you are all going to have um, a, some common shadows, either in the folds of your clothes, maybe in some areas of your hair, or um, actually the same one for everybody below the head all right so if you take a look your head does um, come out further than your neck and right down here right you're going to have a shadow underneath the head that's going to make it look three-dimensional now if i turn back on my layer for my skin you can see it's all one color. Even if I turn my line work on, that line helps, um, you know, show the difference between my neck and my head. But I think it would be even better if we created some kind of shadow below the head to sort of separate out those two areas of um, skin. Okay. Now you do have a choice. You can either decide to use the color picker tool and find that color underneath your neck or I'll show you a trick. So either find it like this, but when you do that, it might be a little gray. So if I take that, I take a look, you see all this brown color here of the shadow is more towards gray. I don't know, that might not jive well with this color here. So another option for you is to, I'm gonna turn these back on. Another option for you is to source the color of the skin that you used and then open that up and pull that down to be a little bit darker. Now, this is a little reckless. You can sort of go in all directions here. Why don't you try and use that trick that I showed you in our last video by sort of clicking on that color and pulling a little bit darker, right? Just like that, just a little bit darker. And then if I'm on the correct layer with my technical pen, we're gonna come in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and add, whoops, let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna come in and add that shadow right below. Now in my picture, I have a shadow right below my face like that, but I also have a little bit of shadow on the sides of my neck. So I'm gonna come down on either sides because my hair is sort of casting a shadow as well. And I'm actually gonna bring this shadow down a little bit further and I'll blend it in down here, okay? Could I leave this like this? I mean, maybe, right? Sometimes that looks cool, especially if you're more stylized with it. But I'm gonna show you another technique today, which is how to blend those two colors together, all right? So this is definitely one of those shadows that I'm gonna need to see from you to separate the face from the neck, so that is one of your requirements. And then you can sort of decide if you wanted to add some highlights or shadows to the hair or the clothes, that's up to you. But I do wanna see this from the neck, all right? So how did I do that? I sourced the color from my face, right? From my face and neck. And then I came over here and I can either open this up and manipulate that color, or I can click and hold and drag down, right? And that will darken that color up, or I can bring it up and lighten it up. I just went slightly down, made it like a shade light darker, and then I added that in. Okay, next up, I'm going to go ahead and blend. So to blend, we're actually going to use a tool that is really familiar. And that tool for us 
is called the tortillion. We would use this when we blended graphite, right? In sketchbook, it's called something a little bit different and it's in this basic tool set and it's right below our pencil. So we have pencil, 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 and then right underneath it, you're gonna see the tortillion, but here it's called the smudge pen. Now, as you can see, you do have some different kinds of controls for this smudge pen. We have the size or the tortillion, right? The size right here, but we also have what they're gonna call the flow. Now I would, I don't know where this starts for you, but I would take that flow and bring that all, all the way down to like 5% or less and then take a look at your size, maybe about there. I will tell you in advance that this is really smudgy. <laughs> All right, so if you come in with that smudge pen, make sure you're on the right layer, and then you're gonna come in here, and just like you would with a tortillion, you're gonna try and blend those two areas together. And if I start there, do you see how I can start to manipulate those two colors to get there, right? So I'm gonna do that here along this entire edge. Right, really trying to blend those two colors together, have an easy gradient between them. If I take this though and I pull it, do you see it? It's really subtle because I have it really down low. I'm gonna go back. I'm sort of working in circles just like I would with graphite or other materials in real life. And it's only gonna work on the layer that you're there, but sometimes it does source from the background. So just be mindful that you're in the right spot and sort of blend those two areas together. And then when I zoom out, do you see that little bit of shadow right there? Right? Let me turn off all of this. Do you see that little bit of shading? Okay, and really work, look, it wasn't so messy, or it was a little messy there. All right, really work that edge there. You're gonna be able to see um, some of your sort of manipulation. All right, I'm going to turn this stuff back on. So there's a little bit of shadow to help us delineate between the face and the neck. And that's what I want to see from you. Okay, but I want to see that in anywhere that it really matters. So for me, especially the neck, but if you wanted to add some detail to the hair and to the shirt or the clothing or any objects you're holding, please go for it. Okay, now if I choose to do that with my hair, let me turn off this, right? If I take a look, it looks weird, doesn't it? If I take a look, here is that highlight. I could come in, use my color picker, and grab that highlight color. This is gonna feel very gray though. Do you see that? It's like really close to gray. I could also choose to use my image or my color here, grab that, and then I could pull this up, right? So if I take that and pull up and grab a highlight color, maybe even a little bit more of a highlight color, that might feel, let me get onto my hair, that might feel like more natural than the gray color that's gonna be in those pixels. All right, so that's up to you. My advice though is to really take a close look, whoops, at your reference and notice where the highlight is. So it's sort of right here on the crown of my hair and then a little bit down there, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll check in. All right, so now that I have some highlights in place, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my smudge pen again. Make sure again that this is the right size for you and that you're really far down with your flow, like below five. And then when you come in, making sure again you're on the correct layer, you can take this and sort of pull it. Maybe you wanna be a little bit more. Pull it around and manipulate that. If I go, ready to check this out, if I go side to side, it's gonna mush that side to side, even outside my line. So just be mindful that you're being intentional about how you're taking this and pulling and pushing that color around. All right. So I'd encourage you to try this. If you have a certain kind of hairstyle in your picture, perhaps you have your hair up 
um, in a ponytail or other things, or maybe you have short hair or you have braids or something like that, try and see the highlights on each of those sections. It might be a little different than what I'm showing you here, but the same kind of thing will apply. All right. If you would like some help, let me know. I'd be happy to take a look at it with you. But just pull that around, being mindful of your edging. You're on the right layer, but I could pull this green right into that, or the purple really, right from behind it. All right, so here you can see that I have added my highlights. I've blended them in with that smudge pen, they call it, right? In my hair and my neck. I might do a little bit more here and there. Um, you can add it to your shirt, your clothing, things like that. Make sure that your colors feel right to you. And when you're happy, go ahead and take a screenshot and submit. You can also remember to come over here and to share and save this image, the image itself, the art piece right here, save image to your camera roll. Remember what I'm looking for is at least one or two areas of adding shading or shadows and highlights. Okay, so at least just the neck and or areas of the hair or the clothes, up to you how far you wanna take this. I do just wanna see that you are able to use this smudge pen with some success. All right, again, Please be mindful of the size of your smudge pen, but be most mindful of the flow. Bring that all the way down, test that out. If it feels too smushy, like everything's just moving around too much, bring that flow down even further, okay? All right, again, take a screenshot and please submit. I look forward to seeing what you've created and uh, I'll see you soon.